What's going on dudes and dudettes, it's your boy Innocence back at it again with another video. Hope you guys could enjoy some of the Warzone gameplay in the background, but that's not what we're here to talk about. Today, we're here to talk about the PS5 and how you probably still can't buy it. <laughs> Sorry to rub salt in your wounds, but Jesus Christ, when is this silicon shortage going to end? You know, fun fact, the silicon shortage is affecting even the automobile market right now as dealers have less operational cars to sell due to supply chain issues in acquiring the necessary silicon on processors. There's actually a decent amount of videos on YouTube showing factory lots of brand new cars that can't actually move because they don't have processors inside of them. And of course, this dealer shortage has also trickled down into the secondhand market, making used car prices pretty much skyrocket by like 20% in the last eight months. So if you're like me and in the last year have been looking for a car to drive and wondering what the heck is going on with these prices, well, it's for the same reason that the PS5 is always out of stock. Looks like we gamers can't ever catch a break. <laughs> Anywho, the PS5, you guys saw the title, your friendly neighborhood console from Sony. Well, recently there has actually been a quiet launch of a new PS5 model currently being sold in both Japan and Australia. Sony didn't make any advertisements for this new console model whatsoever, and it wasn't until some of our keen friends over on Twitter who had just bought their console posted that their bottom screw looks a bit different from everyone else's that we as the internet started to be suspicious that something was was going on. And lo and behold, there was indeed a stealth launch of a new PS5 model that has apparently been being sold since July, so we're actually a bit late in noticing this. It's only being sold in Japan and Australia right now, but will likely come to all regions in the near future. Upon close inspection, the new PS5 model number is CFI-1100A or B, A being for the disc version of the console and B being for the digital edition, which is in stark contrast to the original model number of CFI 1015A or B, so there's definitely a difference to be had here. So now you might be asking, why did I feel the need to make this video? What's the difference between these two models and why exactly should we care? Well, interestingly enough, there actually is a very noticeable difference between these two consoles internally. When you look at the spec sheet, you'll notice that the new PS5 model is actually 300 grams lighter than the original, and for all my US residents out there, that's a whole 0.7 Freedom Eagles less weight. And for a console that was originally about 9.3 pounds in weight, shaving off 0.7 more is a massive deal. No pun intended, of course. It's about an 8% weight reduction and will actually bring the disc edition down from 9.3 to 8.6 pounds and the digital down from 8.4 to 7.8. And this is pretty much great news. You know, a lighter console means more portability and all that stuff if you ever have to lug it around. If you ever have to lug it around. Hello darkness, my old friend. Until you find out what they did to save that weight, and I think you'll be shocked how noticeable the difference actually is. But before we get super into it, let me just explain that I didn't actually buy the new PS5 version because I live in North America, and like I said, these things are only being sold overseas. And even if they weren't, I wouldn't have gotten it because I already have one and I'm poor. <laughs> Well, poor enough not to buy a second PS5 for pretty much no reason, let me put it like that instead. But luckily for us, fellow YouTuber Austin Evans actually went through the trouble of purchasing both digital editions for us, the original model number as well as the new one. So of course, credit for most of the footage goes to him and you can find a link to his video down below in the description. And as far as I'm aware, but I might be wrong on this, he is the very first person to actually discover how Sony managed to save such a massive amount of weight off their console. But back to the video. So alongside a flurry of other things that actually change within this new console model like the aforementioned bottom stand screw and a slightly different shade of green for the expendable m.2 ssd compartment as well as what looks to be like a slightly different bill of materials entirely sony actually reduced the size of both the heat spreader and heat sink by a very noticeable margin. Now, you might be looking at these pictures with your mouth on the floor as was i when i first saw this video asking why well actually we know why it was to save money but still 
why? I mean, look at these things. On top of having a substantially reduced lower copper heat spreader, I mean, I don't even think the newer version has one anymore. The heat sink itself is also laughable compared to the original. Like all jokes aside, seeing these two components side by side instantly made me suspicious of how cool the newer console would run and if there would be any thermal issues that the original didn't have. Now luckily, Austin did go on to measure the exact exhaust temperatures of both systems and noticed that the newer one ran a consistent 4 to 5 degrees Celsius hotter than the original. That's about 7 to 9 degrees in Freedom Eagles and the difference will probably be even higher when measured at the SOC itself, SOC standing for system on a chip and obviously referring to the PS5's processor. And get this, all it was doing was sitting still in an Astro's playroom world. Now, full disclaimer, I'm not a Sony engineer, but it's clear to me that this was by and large an unnecessary change that only served to lessen the cost of components and assembly. Which actually makes a lot of sense because I remember reading just recently that Sony announced that they are no longer taking a loss with each PS5 they sell, and this is probably the reason for that. Sony reduced the size of the PS5's cooling mechanism by just enough so that they could cross that break even point and not have to cry home from the bank. And of course, I don't think the engineers would have cleared a cooling block that wasn't capable of properly cooling a system to be sold on the mass market, but still, it kind of leaves you wondering, will this lesser cooling mechanism ever affect my gaming session? Now, if I were a betting man, I'd probably say no for the foreseeable future. The reason I anticipate they did not implement this smaller cooler in the launch console was because they wanted to get actual data from actual users before greenlighting what in my mind is a massive risk. Because there's a couple things you gotta remember. Unlike the Xbox Series X, the PS5 has a variable clock speed in order to maintain consistent wattage drawl and predictable heat generation. Which basically means that it operates like a gaming PC, in that it would literally throttle itself in the event that the SoC gets too hot. On the contrary, consoles like the Xbox Series X and pretty much every other home console created thus far would just force a shutdown once its fans and heatsinks can't handle the temps being thrown at it. But not the PS5. Like gaming PCs, the console will actively drop your frame rate and do it consistently if it ever gets too hot. Now Sony says that this should be a rare occurrence and that most users shouldn't run into it. But removing thermal real estate like Sony has done here won't ever be a positive thing, you know? So like I said, while I don't think Sony would ship a product that doesn't work, it's still a questionable move at best. Like what if we test both consoles for extended gaming sessions or really intensive games like Cyberpunk 2077 with ray tracing? Would you start to see a throttling difference then? And if not now, maybe in the future when developers really start pushing the console to its limit and physical dust has made its way into the system, limiting the performance of the already smaller heatsink. These are the big questions, and I think at that point, 4 to 5 degrees Celsius plus might mean the difference for a significant amount of frames. But again, not a Sony engineer. I do think I know my way around the PS5 though, and if you search my channel, you'll see that I've made countless technical breakdowns of it in the past. And that's pretty much all I have to say on the subject matter, that while it does help Sony's bottom line and was a confusing decision, and I probably wouldn't not not be surprised if maybe it potentially causes a reason for some probably known issues down the line. But again, nothing solid, I'll just leave all that testing stuff to Digital Foundry or something. You know, unless I found like $700 just laying on the ground. But with that being said, ladies and gents, that's going to bring us to the end of the video. Let me know what you guys think of this entire situation down below in the comments. Do you think that the smaller cooling system on the newer PS5s might be a cause for concern for some newer issues down the line? Or are we foolish for not 100% trusting the Sony engineers? Personally, I could see it going either way, but wouldn't expect it to cause any noticeable differences, at least for a couple of years. But again, give me all your thoughts down below. Low. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you dislike the dislike, and be sure to subscribe so you never miss a future upload on the channel. Oh, and hit that bell notification button if you're so inclined. I've been Innocence, you've been the audience, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.